Well, this year's World Cup is expected to be the most social media event in sports history. That's bigger than this year's Sochi Olympics or the U.S. football championship known as the Super Bowl. During the tournament's first week alone, Facebook recorded 459 million posts, likes, and comments. Jason Mander is the head of trends at Global Web Index. That is a firm that tracks online trends and social media activity. And he laid out some reasons why the World Cup has become the social media event that it has. Even in countries where, where the teams themselves aren't playing in the World Cup, there are huge audiences. Uh, in somewhere like China, there's nearly 100 million people saying that they're tuning in to watch games. And in 2014, the World Cup is happening against a social media landscape that's never been so mature and well developed. People have a range of platforms to choose from, mm -hmm. and behaviors like second screening, sharing of photos are much more common than they were at this time in 2010. So, yeah, this is. Not the first social World Cup, but certainly by far the biggest social World Cup to date. So is Facebook leading this drive right now, and, and who is really benefiting? Actually, we, we were a bit surprised to see just how popular Facebook was. I mean, it was always going to be a major destination, but it's by far the number one social network among people who say they're using social platforms during the World Cup. People are using it to comment in real, in, real time, in real time as the matches happen. They're particularly using it to do things like celebrating goals and obviously talk about the final results. Smaller minorities are doing things like commenting on the refereeing decisions, <laughs> commenting on particular tackles, that sort of stuff. Especially in Britain, you'd be unsurprised to hear that we're especially concerned about what the referee is doing. I imagine so. It's also interesting because if somebody is at work in one time zone and at home in another, they can watch the World Cup on Facebook or another uh, venue on social media, and it's almost like having a group together. Absolutely. It, it's clear that this is a very uh, vocal World Cup in terms of people wanting to share their views with each other. We've seen um, strong spikes in messaging apps in particular. In somewhere like Brazil, WhatsApp has become a major destination so that people can discuss their views and share their thoughts in real time. And obviously those types of services just weren't around four years ago, and it's one of the biggest contributors to this being a major social event. Let's talk about brand loyalty and what that means in terms of advertising, because I was blown away to see that a lot of fans, a lot of fans, really think that Nike and Visa are actually sponsors of the World Cup because of all the ads and because of all the uh, information that's coming out on social media. I know, it's, it's really shocking when you see the figures. So on the first day of the World Cup, Global Web Index asked people to pick their sponsors. And although the top three were indeed official partners, they were um, Adidas and Visa and Coca-Cola, uh, the other brands who aren't sponsoring it did extremely well. There's someone like MasterCard scoring very highly because they were a previous sponsor, and I think the association remains uh, for a long time. And then other brands which have been running heavily World Cup-themed uh, campaigns, even though they make no reference to the tournament themselves, have also scored very highly. So people like Nike and Pepsi, they're, they're, they've really made a strong impact because of their advertising. You know, if I am at it as I am livid with Phil Knight and Nike right now, what can they do to get back at this? Because Adidas pays a fortune to be a main sponsor, and this guerrilla advertising that Nike and others get benefits them in a huge way. Sure. I mean, I don't really think there's any benefit in them trying to strike back. This is a, a nature of the advertising world when social networking is such a developed force. There are always going to be ambush brands and competitor brands that can take advantage of just how keen people are to talk about it. And certainly they can draw comfort from the fact that they are still the most recognized sponsor of all. Yes, one of their competitors getting a bit of coverage, but they're not scoring as highly as the main partner. Got it. So there is some value for all the millions that they've spent. That's good. A little more than a week into the World Cup right now. What are we taking away? Because now are the studies that you've worked on and, and followed, have they included China? Because WeChat has become so popular. I just read that basically WeChat has become so popular in China, it is wiping out uh, texting, that now the average uh, Chinese person texts about once a day, and WeChat messages are flying all over the place. Yes, I mean, WeChat is an absolutely dominant force in China. It's nearly 90% of mobile users who are now on the service. It's been attracting people away from other alternatives, and it's become very much a mobile hub. It's not just a, a chat service. It's an e-commerce uh, portal. It's a picture-sharing site. You can do so much on, mm -hmm. on a site like WeChat compared to what you used to be able to do on mobile apps. And 
if you look at what that means in terms of the volume of numbers of people who are interacting with World Cup via WeChat, it's quite staggering. But then the brand itself has been quite uh, active in terms of sending reporters out to cover the World Cup. I think almost the size of the audience for an event like, Chi like the World Cup in China is underestimated. Yes, the team may not be playing in the tournament, but there's huge interest uh, in the, the tournament. People want to be watching. They, they think it's a really important and fun event to tune into. That was Jason Mander. He's head of trends at Global Web Index, a company that tracks the latest trends in social media.